Hi, Dennis. How are you? How are you? Good. Are you staying getting, well? You. I am. I was getting my most important uh, meeting to you available, so I was getting that. <laughs> so you're at. I guess you're at home. I am at home today. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, I have. Um, we're one week on, one week off in the office to reduce the size of the office. So I have a question. So when there's sure. when there's multiple people up here, I mean more than you know, like the whole whole panel. You have to. Do you have to hit the space bar to to offer up an opinion or a comment? Yeah. So what you do, um, you can unmute yourself manually, uh -huh. but pressing the space automatically unmutes you. Okay. So if I had something to say, I press the space bar and then I talk. Yeah. Why don't you try it? Why don't you go mute yourself and then uh, press the space bar and try to talk to me? Well, let's see. Where am I muting myself? Let's see. So if you go. Oh uh, yeah, mute. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Hit unmute. There you go. Nope, now you're mute still. Now you aren't. No, I'm not. Yeah. yeah, you can always tell mute because on your um, screen, it'll show um, a microphone in red with an X through it. Yes, I see I see the, uh, the little icons down at the bottom. Yeah. Great. So how's the police building going? You get to watch it's, it every day. Uh, every other week. <laughs> every, other, every other week. Oh, wait, let me get Rachel in. Hold on. It's going well, actually. They're doing the parking lot right now, so uh, uh -huh. that whole area that was just a bunch of gravel is now turning into, um, you know, defined parking lot. So it's looking a lot more done, kind of like when you. Okay, let's. Are they going to have their big presentation at the end of summer? I don't know. Been... Oh. I don't know. No. Haven't been decided. I haven't been decided. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Commissioner Lyle Smith. You made it. Uh, apologies for last month. For some reason, I left you off the calendar invite, so I wanted to apologize. Her mute's on. Her mute's on. <laughs> well, there's Denise. She's muted too. No, she's yeah. trying to connect her audio. There's Steve. Dennis. How are you doing? Okay. <laughs> Good. Was there coffee uh, Friday? Yeah, we missed you. You weren't there. Well, I tried to join about 10 after and I, nothing happened. Really? Nick didn't see you, I guess. Yeah. Oh, well. Can you all see my screen? I'm sharing the agenda right now. I want to make sure that's working. Yes, I, I see it. Like so Rachel's muted. Shelley. Video. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Shelly. Hey, how are you? Good. We're just kind of casually getting everybody in here. Also, Ken, what's the size of our group this evening? 
It'll be anywhere between uh, kind of eight and 12 people. If I can't see every, it's, I always like to see people. I can't see everybody when we have our PowerPoints and our agenda. So Shelly, are you, do you want me to do the share screen with you for the PowerPoint? I can just- uh, When Jeff hops on, yes. So okay. he will ha he has our PowerPoint. He'll okay. be driving. I'll it just surrender the screen and you guys can do the PowerPoint and then I'll just take it back. Perfect. That works okay. And will you remind me how much time we have? We just so we make sure we sure Bob's not in yet, but generally we give um, presentations about 15 minutes, including questions. But you know, if it goes okay. over, it goes over, but kind of stay in that. Okay. No, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll stay. I'll keep my remarks really tight and remind Jeff to the 15 minutes when he comes in. And then uh, a clarifying question. I know when we presented to the Parks and Recreation Committee, their chair requested we hold all questions to the end. Is this a group who holds questions or I asks think, questions? I think we will let the direction of Bob when he checks in as the okay. chair. Okay. It, it allows us to zip through because yeah. sometimes usually, we answer things. But. Usually it is presentation first, but I'll leave him the direction for that. Okay. All right. Just to, just to clarify, I know sometimes when we get people ask some really interesting related questions and uh, can take a little longer. So. And do we see Jeff? Has he popped in yet? No, not that I see. I get the little. Yeah, harder to see. Hey, there's Victoria. Hi, Hi Victoria. I'm Christina. Hello, Victoria. Hello, hello. <laughs> we're waiting for our chair, so I'm just kind of letting everybody in from the waiting room, and we're just kind of chatting until the meeting starts. Okay, sounds great. And do you have a presentation, or are you going to speak this evening? I'm just going to speak. Okay, yeah. sounds great. We're just, uh, hi. we're just waiting for everyone to get here and then we're gonna, um, and Bob isn't here yet, so. I'm oh, Jeff's here, it. he's connecting, so that's good. I'm just getting everybody in from the waiting room. But our illustrious chair is not logged in yet. Okay, and. Corey, you get to hear this again on Thursday and I get to. Yeah. I get to join you, so yeah, that'll be great. I see Bob. Fourteen. Denise. Bob, is that you that just checked in under Jean? Yes, it is. That always that always shows Jean. That's my my wife's first name. It's the first part of our email address. So you can click on your name if you find your screen, and you can click. Uh, usually, it's right click, and you can rename yourself if you want. You don't no, have to. Uh, just leave it there. Okay. <laughs> can, can you see me? No. Nope. I wonder why I can't even see myself. Because your video your your video is off. Okay, wherever that is. So, uh, Jeff, while we're while Bob's getting organized, just wanted to let you know, fifteen minutes. So we want to go at a good clip so that everyone has chance to ask us questions, right. and and to our chair, we are also hoping some for some wisdom and advice from this group on how to best reach out and inform. The neighborhood association so we would like some guidance um from you on that i have an iphone guest can someone say who that is and i'll write that i don't know who 
who that is. iPhone guest, uh, let me know who it is and I can rename it. Um, Christina, can you tell this me is how Carla Long of Mark by Hill. Oh, great, Carla. I'll just change, can change your name on the screen so people know who it is that's talking. And I'm going to mute myself so you don't hear the back noise. That sounds great. Thank you. Uh, Christina? Yeah. Could you show me how to get my video going here? Okay, one second. Okay, uh, Bob, where are you? Let's see. So, Bob, if you go to the bottom left of your screen, there's a thing that says stop video. And if you click on that, there's a little up arrow and you can say start. Where would see that be? Usually it's at the bottom of the screen. It's a bar you might see mute or. Nope, nothing there. Garrity, maybe try on the top or the side. Do you see a, a, a box with um, maybe one or two uh, screens on it with people's faces? Oh, they're over on the right hand side. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes if you if you um, click on the show full grid, sometimes the status bar that says stop video will show up as well. And sometimes if you click on those three dots by your, where it says Gene for you, then you can click on start video. Actually, I just asked you to, maybe that'll, will that help you? Go to three dots and it'll say start video. Oh yeah, start video. Yeah, here we go. Here you are. I think we have everybody in. Uh, Chair LaSalle, if you want to start the meeting. Yeah, well, now I've lost everything. All I see is a Zoom. But let's see here. Hmm. How weird. In the top right, there's an exit full screen. You might be able to click that and it'll minimize Zoom so you can have access to your things that are now buried behind Zoom. Exit full screen. What are you trying to look for, Bob? What, what, what's the perfect? Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get my video back up. I, well, we can see you. Are you I having trouble you. seeing that? I'm the... having trouble seeing this full screen, though. I can't see anything. I can, I, right now, it just, there's a square that shows zoom in the middle of it is all I see. Oh, it may be. Um, you might want to go down to the tabs at the bottom of your screen where kind of you have your, um, where you might see the Zoom icon and sometimes the meeting control is a different um, window. See if you can click between the two. That works sometimes as well. Yeah, that didn't seem to get it. Talk on it. Well, we can see you. I wonder if it's worth it to start the presentation. Yeah, I'll go, go, I'll go ahead. And, I'll go ahead and get the meeting started. Okay. So, uh, at four minutes after seven, the meeting of August third, twenty twenty, of the Citizens Involvement Committee is called to order. And Dennis, would you please call the roll by name? Sure. Um, I'm looking at uh, sixteen participants. Um, should I go by neighborhoods or should I just go by my list of participants here? Whichever you prefer. Okay, Barkley Hills, Janet and or Carla. I'm here, Carla Laws. 
Okay. Um, in Kanema, we have Linda Basinger. Here. She's here. Um, in Caulfield, we have uh, uh, John. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good. Um, uh, Gaffney Lane, we have Amy. I'm here. Good. And McLaughlin, we have Denise. I'm here. And Park Place, we have Steve. Here. And Bob. Here. Good. I think we're there. Is there anybody that we missed? I think Is we got them all. Here? Okay. <clears throat> Uh, our first uh, presentation this evening will be from Shelley Perini, a water resource recovery facility outfall project. Shelley, are you with us? Yes, hello, I'm here. Thank you, oh. Bob. Well, you betcha. Go ahead with your presentation. Okay, we're going to share the screen. So I am here this evening with the our engineer and the project manager of the proposed project, Jeff Stallard. And uh, thank you for giving us 15 minutes on the agenda. We hope to save time so you can ask questions. And uh, Bob, also, as I shared, we would like some advice uh, from this wonderful group on how to best reach out and inform the neighborhood associations. So next slide, please. So first of all, just real quickly for those who may not know, Clackamas Water Environment Services is the regional wastewater treatment provider. West produces clean water for more than 190,000 customers in Clackamas County. West operates and maintains five resource recovery facilities, one right here in Oregon City, 23 pumping stations, and more than 340 miles of pipes that carry wastewater to treatment facilities. So basically, in a nutshell, we take your dirty water and we make it clean. Next slide. So the quick overview, the current outfall from the Tri-City Water Resource Recovery Facility was constructed in 1984 and is nearing capacity during peak wet weather events that typically happen in the winter. So Wes is proposing to install a new outfall pipeline that would run underneath John Storm Park and discharge into the Willamette River the proposed outfall project, which calls for a vote of the people of Oregon City, would be funded as a component of Wes's capital improvement plan. So the proposed project has been approved by the Board of County Commissioners and our Wes Advisory Committee. It is funded and uh, it would not increase taxes. You probably already know that because you probably have folks coming to you uh, quite often for uh, efforts like this that need to have access to a park, but our Secretary of State really wants to make sure we get uh, this across that this is not a tax measure and will not increase your taxes. Next slide. <clears throat> so basically just summary, Wes is proposing to construct and obtain easements for an out pipeline that would go underneath John Storm Park, which you'll hear about more in a moment. And as you know, that is required by your city charter. So next slide. And so now the driver behind the need for the new outfall pipeline, I'll turn it over to Jeff Stellar. Thank you, Shelley. And since we do have 15 minutes, I wanna be cognizant of that. So I'm gonna go relatively quickly through these slides, but feel free to uh, ask any questions when we're done. So what identified the need for the outfall? In 2018, Wes completed a collection system master plan uh, which was um, completed by Jacobs Engineers. And it, as part of that master plan, we forecasted and modeled our projected flows through the build out of our urban growth boundary, or roughly 2080 is the time frame. And so the chart, chart you see on here has areas highlighted in red. Now those areas highlighted in red are, during the study were identified to have excessive inflow and infiltration. So as Shelley mentioned, the need for the outfall is really a wet weather outfall. So it is this inflow and infiltration that is having the biggest impact on the sizing and needs to construct a new outfall. Inflow and infiltration very quickly. Inflow is 
incorrect connections to our separated sewer system that could be building foundation drains, storm sewer pipes that are inadvertently connected to sanitary. Those are what we consider inflow. Infiltration would be deterioration of our pipe system, cracks, tree roots. They let groundwater as it comes up in the winters come into our collection system and routing it to the treatment plant. And we have no way to separate that out once it's mixed. So we have to treat it as wastewater and it goes through our entire treatment process out to the river. So to demonstrate kind of the I and I uh, impacts to flow, this chart here, the gray line shows at 2080, our model peak flow to the treatment plant, if we did nothing to address our I and I issue, would be 400 million gallons a day. If we make proper investments in our infrastructure and figure out where our, uh, within those basins are our, um, where our issues reside, we can address those issues and bring our peak wet weather flow down to 180 million gallons a day, which saves us significant money in infrastructure, construction at the treatment plant, as, as well as extending the life of infrastructure that we already have in the ground today. So once we had the collection system master plan completed, we kicked off an outfall routing study, um, knowing that we needed more capacity there based on that master plan. We broke the segment into three, we broke the outfall alignment into three segments, and we kicked off the effort trying to identify where we would go in the Willamette River. We're looking for a deep spot in the river that has very stable riverbed, so larger cobbles, and as deep as we can go in the river, that helps with mixing. We did bathmetric surveys and riverbed sampling, and the target we found within the Willamette River was right outside of the Johnstone Park, hence why our pipeline will route through Johnstone Park. One thing to note, we're not going to the Clackamas River, even though it is closer. DEQ has a three basin rule, which allows, which re prevents us from putting a new wastewater outfall to the Clackamas River. So we're forced to go to the Willamette to meet that regulation. So we started at the plant and worked our way south towards the river. The first segment, our proposed alignment is the magenta line. We looked at four different routes to get to this endpoint, and the purple line was our proposed alignment. This falls within West occupy our West owned property, the old Agnes alignment, which was um, abandoned by the city. The second part of the alignment that we looked at are this, the, the, again, the magenta line and the orange line. Um, the magenta line was, the purple line was much longer and had um, drove our pipe size to be much larger. So we are proposing the orange line, which gets us from the Main Street roundabout to the Cloverleaf and the I-205 interchange with McLaughlin. And then finally, the last segment we looked at was from that cloverleaf, how do we get out to the Willamette River in our target spot? We worked closely with ODOT to try to see if we couldn't build the pipeline as part of the bridge expansion project. Uh, unfortunately, they are still searching for funding. And so we, uh, with, with uh, not a concrete schedule, we decided to go on our own and uh, segregate the two projects. Well, we are working closely with ODOT to obtain the necessary easements. Uh, we're planning to do what's shown in the red line. So what does this look like in section view? One of the thing I wanna call attention to is the, from the, from the Cloverleaf and the I-205 interchange, we're looking at tunneling out to the river. Um, this tunnel would, would mitigate some of our impacts to the John Storm Park. That is um, mostly from a public access standpoint, but also from a archeological and heritage. Um, there's a, a strong uh, archeological foundation there in the John Storm Park area and a lot of history. And the less we do to disturb the ground, the more we do to protect those uh, potential um, heritage finds for lack of a better way to say that. So our current proposed uh, plan would be to tunnel from the interchange there all the way out to the river and recover our drilling machine from inside the river, minimizing in, uh, dis the disturbances at the park. We would also tunnel going back towards the treatment plant. Um, the I-205 interchange has you know, 50 feet of fill to bring the, the roadway up to meet I-205. So we would tunnel back towards the plant to get out from underneath that, that as well so as to not impact the um, interchange at the going on to the interstate. So what does the pipeline look like out in the river? 
just want to make sure everybody's clear. The pipeline is buried under the riverbed. Uh, what we have that sticks up out into the river flow itself into the into the river stream are they're, they're called a tide flex valve. It's a very large, uh, it's very r stiff rubber consistency of like a car tire. And uh, if I think about it as it's a spray nozzle underneath the river to help diffuse our effluent out into the river that helps with mixing and keeps from getting a jet stream kind of blowing out into the river. There would be approximately 20 of these diffuser section diffuser ports uh, coming up from our pipe um, cross section into the river. So what are our next steps now that we've got our alignment, our proposed alignment identified? So the next steps are to finalize our size. Right now we're looking at a 90 inch diameter pipe and we're finalizing material, which is uh, fiberglass. We're working on a permit strategy. We're anticipating over 30 permits and a two year process to obtain all the necessary permits to build this from state and local all the way through federal uh, Army Corps DEQ. We're gonna to continue to engage stakeholders and we are going to await the results of the ballot measure from, no, um, from November 3rd as the public has an opportunity to, to vote on this project. One thing that came up during our process um, to, uh, with the Oregon City Commission was uh, sensitivity again to the archeological and the heritage in the area. Um, Wes, as part of the project, would go through the SHPO requirements, uh, similar to we would go through any, any other uh, permitting requirement. But to make sure that we were out in front and be good neighbors and to work closely with our new neighbors, the Grand Ron Tribe, who now own the uh, Blue Heron Paper Mill, we've had several meetings with them preemptively, um, getting out ahead of this process, as well as a site tour we did about two weeks ago, uh, where we walked the site with them and learned learned about their concerns of the project and really are trying to make sure that we get out in front of those issues, similar to the way we will for most of our permittings. Um, but there is a lot of sensitivity to this, so I want to show where we were at on this very three-step process. We're basically at the end of step one right now. And with that, I will turn it over to Shelly and she can uh, bring the presentation to a close. So if the measure passes, uh, we did meet with the Oregon City Parks uh, and Recreation Advisory Committee. Uh, we would, Wes would be providing mitigation improvements that they have identified. These are in addition to restoring the park to its original condition. It's not a requirement. It's something that we felt was important in the spirit of being a good neighbor. And what the uh, PRAC group recommended was that those mitigation improvement resources go towards a tree inventory uh, to look at some mediation of hazardous trees. And then any remaining funds from that process would go to master planning of John Storm uh, and Clackamas Park. Next slide. So public involvement, as I'm sure all of you know, uh, it's been a challenging time to be able to get out and meet and connect with people. But Jeff and I have been committed to using platforms like this. We started in spring meeting with stakeholders, sometimes one-on-one. -on -one. We really wanted to make sure that the, the business owners, environmental groups, uh, our tribal representatives, uh, that we had an opportunity to meet with folks who would be uh, connected or have a stake in the core area. And then since then, we've been out meeting with groups like the Clackamas River Basin Council, uh, our Rotaries, our Chamber of Commerce, our business groups, basically anyone who's open to, to listening and learning more about this proposed project. We have two online open houses scheduled uh, for late summer and fall. And so we are working with the City of Oregon City's uh, public affairs team. We've done our first promotional piece in the Oregon City Trail News. It's an informational piece on the proposed project, the ballot measure, and uh, also the open houses. But as I shared at the beginning, we're hoping you will give us some advice on how to reach out to the neighborhood associations to make sure people are informed. And if for any additional information, we of course have the website that is attached there to the web link. So questions, I think we made our, I think we did it. I know that was a lot to digest. So any questions?
I have one. Uh, how deep is the tunneling? How far down are you? The, the tunnel right now is going to preliminarily is approximately 50 feet uh, below ground uh, at the clover leaf. So we'll, we'll come out into the river under the river bed, but about 50 feet down is a good rough number. Mm -hmm. What is the life expectancy of those tide flex fittings? That is a great question. So I, um, I know they've been installed for more than 25 years on other facilities uh, infrastructure, um, but I don't know the exact life expectancy. One thing I didn't note is DEQ as part of our permit will require dive inspections. And so we will go down every other year with divers and inspect our diffuser ports to make sure that they are still in good condition and still uh, operating the way they are intended and to make sure that nothing's come down the river and maybe knocked one off. They are made to break away similar to a fire hydrant on a water main um, where you the hydrant breaks away but the water main itself self stays intact that's how these are designed as well in case debris comes down the river and ODOT has uh, received permission to use John Storm Park as kind of a staging area for their proposed construction of the bridge additions so would you and ODOT have any conflictions in that area? Not at this time. We've, we've been coordinating with ODOT, as I mentioned, to look to see if we could build the project with the bridge. But at this time, well, I'm not expecting any conflicts of uh, e park use. How clean is the water going to be? This discharged. The, uh, the water is treated to our NPDES permit. So it's it's actually treated, the quality coming out of our plants is better than the quality in the river. Um, from a nutrient standpoint, we're down very low. And, and those permit limits are regulated by DEQ and we um, test and monitor. Uh, we have a, a very solid test and monitoring program, which we submit uh, discharge monitoring reports on a monthly basis to DEQ. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, will you be looking for a, a support letter of some kind from the CIC or where do you, where do you want us to go from here? Uh, Bob, we are not allowed to ask for support. We're here just informational uh, only, um, but we would like advice and direction on uh, on how to best ensure that you know the neighborhood association members and the people who live in Oregon City would be uh, informed. We were uh, we've got the trail news going out. I know Laura and Christina and others uh, have talked to us about helping us maybe do a an email through the neighborhood association. So that would be an area to help us inform. Then we're also thinking about doing a, a postcard. Again, it would be informational only, not advocacy, just to ensure that people are well informed. We really wanna make sure people uh, understand about the project, where to go for information, and that it is not a tax measure. Uh, that's something that the Secretary of State has made very clear to us. So anything you can do to advise on how to best inform, we'd appreciate it. Shelly, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Denise from McLaughlin Neighborhood. Our yes. meetings have, we haven't had any uh, neighborhood association meetings since COVID started. Uh, yeah. It's gonna be hard to get the word out to our neighbors. Um, next door neighborhood uh, is a possibility and the Oregon City News are two possibilities. Um, Thank you. Next door, Oregon City News, and and you are correct. This this has been a, a challenge, uh, yeah. trying to find ways to communicate uh, in in this COVID environment. Um, but those that are excellent. Any any uh, do you have? Are there any deadlines? Do you do? Do you still do uh, mail? No. No. J just emails. Well, that brings up one idea, though, is that 
we are not spending our money these days that we normally would for email, I mean, for mailing notices of our meetings. So that might be something to consider is instead of having general meetings for each neighborhood association, maybe looking to put together neighborhood association newsletters. And this could be an insert in one of those. That would be up, of course, to the individual neighborhoods. Terrific. Well, we are our commitment to the city of Oregon City that anything that we would provide to them would be approved by the Secretary of State. Uh, and so the piece that you'll see in the Oregon City Trail News is rather lengthy and I'm working on getting a shorter one approved. So if, if, if anyone were open to sending an email or putting it in a potential uh, printed newsletter, I would be happy to provide that with you. So Bob, would you be my point of contact or Yes, but I would also, um, well, I'd be your point of contact for the CIC, but not for the individual neighborhood associations. They're all listed on the city website, but also if you could get give everybody in the CIC now your email address, then they could easily get a hold of you for any you. help they might help. Okay, it's S. Perini, that's S as in Sam, Perini, P-A-R-I-N-I, -I, at clackamas.us. U.S. as in United States? Yes, sir. Yeah. Does anybody have any ideas for Shelly on uh, how to uh, better contact the neighborhoods? I have a question for you, Shelly. Can you send me the PowerPoint or Jeff that you have made to this evening and I can forward that on to CIC members? Is that okay to forward that PowerPoint on to CIC yes. members? Yes. Okay. Yes. If you and do we'll, that, I can also put Shelly's email in that email. Thank you. Be good. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much. That's uh, quite a project you have going there. Yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you for I really your time appreciate it. and advice. Okay, our next presentation is on a land use application, a 182 Warren or Parrot. Dang it. Doing that. So, Petronella. Well, can you all hear me? I think I, I muted myself. Are we good? Can you hear, can you hear me? Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, um, I'm sorry to say, but we, our architect was also supposed to be on the call tonight, um, but he doesn't have service where he's at. So I'm going to do my very best to present all of this to you. Um, so uh, first of all, um, you know, a little bit about me and this is my husband, Danny. <laughs> yeah. um, we, we've been in the industry uh, since the, the mid 1990s. We built our first facility uh, in 1997. I have been in numerous um, rural advisory committees and participated in many meetings with uh, state legislators. Um, and this is what we have, I could say this is a, in our blood. Um, so we wanna do at our existing facility, add another in addition 25 rooms to our addition five that we have right now. Um, and I don't know, um, Christina, if you can show where um, the plans are, um, we should, So what we're, what yeah. we're going to, okay. All right, so there we go. Can everyone see that? That's yeah. the, the 3D model where. Yeah, this yes. is, yeah, this is what it's going to look like. Um, and, and there's like. Do you want to do floor plans? The, the floor plans, if anybody was interested to see the floor plans, I've also included those um, there as well. Um, we have, um, you know, a waiting list here on our facility right now. Um, and I know um, the industry very well. Um, it's hard for me to um, even, you know, send back, um, you know, when I get requests from like Willamette Falls Hospital, uh, Petronella, do you have a vacancy? And I said, no, um, but we have, you know, the, the state of Oregon does not have enough beds for um, the amount of seniors that are gonna need it in the next you know, five to 10 years. Um, you know, we have approximately 37 millions of Americans, uh, 65 and older right now. That is uh, supposed to double by the year 2030. 
So um, I know uh, working with the state, I know these numbers pretty well. Um, and so we, we plan on um, helping in any way that we can. And this is what we, um, you know, um, you know, want to do. My husband's a, an architect, uh, I mean, a, a builder, sorry. Uh, and so he's built our two previous facilities prior to this and is excited to start this one. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. I'd be more than happy to, to answer. How many beds are going to be in that facility? So there's five right now. We're going to add uh, 25 to them. Okay. So you have 30. Yes. What do you oh, do? Know, my parents live just two doors down from you. Oh. Uh, this is Amy Wilhite here in Maryland, Fergus. Just live right next by you. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, one of the questions that my mom had was where do you plan for visitor parking? And can you just walk us through how the addition will go compared to where it is now? I, the floor plan is so tiny, I'm having a hard time envisioning where these 25 beds are going to go compared to where you're at now. So, so we're going to go vertical um, at, uh, also, and then in the back, we have um, a lot of space in the back. And then uh, on the side, we're going to come all the way up pretty close to the sidewalk in the front. Um, but as far as the parking spaces, we have, there's, um, and I don't know, on here, I, I'm not the one with the, with the uh, but there's, there's going to be a total of eight parking spaces on, the, um, on this uh, project. We are, I do believe, required only to have five. But I got to remind people that these seniors do not drive. Um, you know, they, um, we, we won't be, you know, um, needing them for the, for the senior population. You know, our staff will be the ones using the, the, um, the um, parking spaces. Uh, but other than that, we, we shouldn't need more than that. Does that answer your question, Amy? So how many are you, how many will be in the front section that you're adding on versus the back? You know, I don't have the, the right in front of me. Um, it's mostly in the back um, that we're adding and, and we're going vertical. We're going, we're already a, a two story, um, but I don't know if you want to pull um, the, the actual plan. Um, I can't zoom in and out of it. Um, can you hear me, Petronella? Yes. Right. Okay. Um, the, the site plan didn't come with the PDFs that you sent me, so I just have the building footprint on the building plans. So the um, I can pull up um, a well, view of the existing house, if that's helpful. I might yeah, do well, that. Well, yeah, the, the, the ones that you're showing right now, it has the existing and the addition. So it, um, let me um, see if I can share another screen. This is the OC map screen, and that shows the existing house, if that's helpful. Can people see that? Yeah, the, the existing yes. one. Okay, and there you go. That's, thank you, Christina. And then we're going to go in the back and then vertical as well. In the middle, there's going to be a courtyard. Hmm. And Petronella, remind me this needs to go to the Planning Commission. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, for that's okay, correct. Yeah. And so the um, and so it, you you haven't turned the application in yet. This is the last step before turning the application in. We, we have to run the application, but this is the last step, yes. Okay, and then once it's complete, um, a land use notice will come up for the planning commission hearing date, uh, which will be sometime probably early, late summer, I mean, probably early fall, probably the September meeting, so probably something like that. We have a, a hearing scheduled at the, and an, I do believe the 24th of August. Okay, great. So for people who live within 300 feet uh, or get the land use notices as a neighborhood, um, if you sign up, you'll receive the land use notice for this pretty soon. I Most likely Pete Walter, who's the planner for this, will complete this application uh, very soon and notice it. Are there any other questions, comments?
what do you do for security to keep your um, residents safe from people walking in? You're on a fairly busy street and from getting your residents out. So that's a very good question. What we have currently is we, of course, we have alarms and uh, security systems on all of our doors. Uh, every time a door opens, you know exactly which door opened uh, and exactly which one um, is closed. That's on right now. And we're going to continue that same security system as well. And then we're going to do a video uh, monitoring system as well. And so depending on, um, you know, um, when you have your dementia patients, that is going to be in a locked facility where that, you know, even the doors, they would have to have a, a key, key a kind of a, a code keypad to get in and out of that. And on top of that, we're going to have staff, of course. So, Petronella, how many additional staff do you anticipate you're going to need? Well, um, the, the code right now is for, um, you, you have uh, one to 10 uh, ratio is what it is. You know, and I can't really tell you because it depends on the acuity of the patient. So how many staff do you have on right now? Just me and my husband or one that comes in and releases us. So you said that there are, uh, there will be eight parking spaces? Yes, sir. Will those all be in the front? there where that present driveway area is and and in uh he put I, I do believe two or three in the in the middle section after the big um uh so there's gonna be a driver going all the way back um to the garage where the existing garage is now it's kind of in the middle one there's going to be a couple spaces there too yeah okay um <clears throat> at first it doesn't seem like that's very many spaces for a facility with that many people but with my father, when he was in a facility like this, we experienced that usually that would be a, a adequate number. Not many, many visitors are there at the same time. So it sounds good. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Okay, well, thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you so uh, much, I appreciate all of you guys. Yeah, did you need any kind of a letter of support or anything to go forward to the Planning Commission for you? Uh, I, I would like that to go to Peter, yes, if we could. Okay, then uh, I would take uh, anybody with a, a motion for a letter of approval. Well, this is Amy. I don't think as the CIC you should send a letter for or against because we're not actually the neighborhood. I think it's up to us to make sure we take this information and get it out there. But I don't think we, the number of us here should probably approve. Um, I didn't I didn't quite get that, Amy. Um, would you try it again? I was just saying, I don't think, in my opinion, we should send a letter for or against. This is an informational meeting because we don't live there, it would be, I don't think behoove us to say yes or no, just to take this information and try to share it with the actual neighbors. So, so what we've done before is um, we've done, we've been through this process before because South End Association does not exist. Um, they wanted me to be the board chair for that. I just can't put one more thing on my plate. Uh, and that's why I'm here. Um, you know, some letter that, yes, I, I, I I was here and I actually brought my project forward and I talked about all the different points and, and answered all the questions it would be fine as well. You don't have to approve it. That would be probably what the city would do. Okay, well, since we are acting as a kind of a neighborhood association for the South End, since they're no longer active, um, I, would, I would entertain a motion for a letter, but it doesn't sound like it would be necessary. Thank you, Bob. Okay, with no motion coming forward, then thank you so much for your information. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, y'all. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, next up is Chamber of Commerce, Victoria Meinig. Hi everyone, good evening. Um, my name is Victoria Meinig. I am the CEO of the Oregon City Chamber of Commerce. Um, I have been there as of Wednesday an entire year. <laughs> so gonna let you just kind of catch you up to what's been going on with the Chamber. Um, after eight years um, of being in, on Beaver Creek and Fur, we have now moved to our new location, which is 615 High Street, Suite 102. So we are right by the elevator. We are in the Elevate Wealth Building. Um, so if anyone's out and about, please come and visit. Um, let's see, what else? We have been busy during COVID, of course, um, keeping up with the information that we send out to our members for a weekly newsletter. And then we currently do a virtual GMOC. Of course, we still cannot meet. Um, we miss everyone and we can't wait to get back to that. But um, for now, we meet virtually um, on Wednesday mornings. And I invite all of you to attend if you'd like to just pop in and see kind of what we're up to. Um, we have been busy, of course, partnering, um, actually collaborating with our partners, such as the Downtown Oregon City Association, um, with the city, um, with the ECDEV department, the tourism department. Um, and so that has been a pleasure. It's been great to get to work with everybody. Um, we've been helping with the grants and the parklets and tourism initiatives and the ECDEV team. So that's been keeping us quite busy. Um, as you know, we um, are not able to have any events at this time. So we don't have anything really um, coming up yet, keeping our fingers crossed that things improve. Um, but I think that's about it. Does anybody have any questions for me or anything? Looks like we have a pretty silent group here tonight, Victoria. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay, well, thank you so much for the information. Hopefully as we go along, uh, you'll have more information as this, this bad stuff hopefully goes away soon. You bet, you bet. Well, thank you for having me and good night. Thank you. Okay, that uh, completes our presentations for this evening. Any public comments or is there anybody from the public out there who want to comment? Hearing none, we'll go on to the minutes. Uh, October 7th, 2019 draft minutes. I have uh, one note is that it indicated the voting and showed that everybody in attendance voted. However, at that time, the following people were not primary representatives, so their votes could not count. And that'd be Rita Mills, Linda Basinger, myself, and Carla Laws. Those votes should not have been entered as approved votes. I'll make a notation on the final minutes. I did check though, and there would still have been enough votes to make those, those units pass. Any other comments on the October 7th meetings? Meeting. Any comments on November 4th? Any comments on December 2nd? Okay, I would take a motion to approve all three of those minutes dates. I'll make a motion to approve October 7th, November 3rd, and December 2nd with the uh, changes to the October 7th meeting as noted. I will second. Okay, we have uh, moved and seconded to approve with changes those three sets of minutes. Uh, Dennis will have to take a a vote by name since we can't raise our hands on this medium. <laughs> okay. Um, remind me, okay. Uh, I vote yes. Uh, Bob? Yes. Linda? Yes. Steve? Yes. Denise? Aye. John? Yes. 
Carla? Hi. Amy? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to abstain. I did not have time to read them. Okay. I think that's it. That's everybody. It sure feels good to be able to vote. Doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, okay, our next uh, item it would be staff liaison, Christina. Yeah, that's me. Let me click to my report. So Pete Walter um, will be coming to you uh, in the October meeting, because we don't have a September meeting, to talk about our comprehensive plan update and the community vision survey. I hope everyone has taken the survey by now, and if you haven't, you can click on this link. And what the project advisory team, which is made up of a very large cross-section of Oregon City interests, and if you're interested in who's on the project advisory team, their names are listed on the OC2040 website. They have challenged all of the um, Oregon City committees to have all members um, do one community conversation. And so I'm going to uh, try to do my best little quick prep to, to tell you a little about community conversations and see if you can do a small, simple one with people that you are close with, be it your family or your neighbor association, if you're having meetings or your book club or whomever, your Bible group, whoever you may normally meet with. And then he, people come in October and provide a little bit more of a, a formal presentation. But I wanted to... Um, I have a look, three slides that Pete showed me. I wanted to go through them really quickly. So on OC2040.com, can everyone see this slide? I want to make sure I'm screen sharing. Is it? Mm -hmm. uh, can you see it now? It says 2040.com. There, there we go, yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, it, the, if you go to that website, you'll see under Get Involved, host a community conversation. And that is really a fancy name to talk to people you know. That's all it really is. And there's a more, there's a more complex community conversation kit about, you know, if you really want to do larger ones and you, you really want to bring in more people. And I, I think we definitely want you to do that. And if you want to do that this month, you go ahead and dive in. But if you are not sure you're the best, uh, you've never really done facilitating meetings, I'm going to give you the quick and easy presentation on how you can do a tester one this month or next month. So the community conversation kit is here. You can download it. And really, it's playing off of the two main questions we're asking the community in this vision part of the comprehensive plan, which is what makes Oregon City special and what should we strive to preserve? And what about Oregon City would you like to change in the future and what can we improve? There are more questions in the communication kit if you want to go into more details, but starting with this and even only talking about this is great for the first try. Uh, as a reminder, as a discussion leader, keep it fun, be open, share your discussion. It's okay to have disagreement. Disagreement's good. Uh, keep the flow. So if people want to, uh, you know, dive into a specific issue, you know, pull them back a little bit, summarize. Uh, there are no right and wrong answers respect everybody's differences, and write down questions your group doesn't have answers for. And through the discussion, we just want you to write down your best um, you know, notes of what happened in the meeting, the highlights. And then you can do two things. Uh, send your uh, notes to Pete Walter via his email, and he can put it into our uh, database. Or you can just go to the oc2040.com survey and um, add your, the name of your group. You don't have to do any demographic questions. You can just post your notes straight into the survey. So either way are great. I think, um, you know, I really like the project advisory team, their challenge that we are only going to be able to reach out to the whole Oregon City community, especially in this time of COVID, if everyone uh, takes it upon themselves to say, who do I know? Who can I reach out to? And then when we regroup kind of in the fall, we can see where we haven't reached out to, who still isn't at the table. Uh, but uh, um, if you can, in the next two months before Pete comes, think of one group you already know and uh, try out this conversation with them. 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, however you want to, long you want to have it and see uh, what kind of uh, discussions you can come about 
what you want out of Oregon City. For Neighborhood Association, this is also a really great way to pull people in to your Neighborhood Association because you can say, hey, you just talked about all these great things. You know what else is a great way to make change? Be involved in your Neighborhood Association. So I encourage you, feel free to use this to piggyback on Neighborhood Association goals as well. Uh, and as always, um, any questions, you can send them directly to Pete Walter, pwalter at orcity.org. And the website again is OC2040. So that is uh, kind of our charge from our project advisory team uh, to have all of our boards and committees do one community conversation this summer. I'm gonna go back to the liaison report. I'm gonna scroll down. Uh, as always, a reminder that even though there's COVID, we still have land use applications coming in and we are still sending out notices. So if you are ever interested in what's going on, you can always click at the development tab at the bottom of our main website. You can sign up for the land use notice list, which goes out every Sunday and we'll send you a list of anything newly noticed that week. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are, if you are a neighbor association that is meeting with a developer and you wanna get a copy of the pre-application notes, you can use our public records request form right at the city recorder's page. There's a blue or gray button, just click on it and you can request the pre-application conference notes and we'll send those to you. And we also are now doing a monthly trails new trail news monthly e newsletter that was a lot of words in one sentence uh and you can subscribe at that link below and that goes out once a month and kind of talks about everything that's happening in all the departments and kind of uh for it's the monthly one for the the, the quarterly uh trails news so that's the update i have if anybody has any questions who's been inspired to do a community conversation <laughs> Who thinks they could do it? Okay. I think maybe. Hey, <laughs> I think maybe we could in Barclay Hills. We just had our meeting, so possibly we could try to tackle that. So yeah, and you can have. A, I mean, a, if you any of you use Zoom, you can just Zoom your friends or Zoom your neighbors or have a porch community conversation. You know, porch social distance happy hour. These are all options to to bring people in and you can say, I have this, you can even say like, I have this homework I need to do and can you help me with my homework? You know, you can bring, you can, you can blame me and as a way to bring, you know, your first community conversation. But having this done this summer will be really helpful to let kind of Pete know how it went and, and how we can continue these conversations on in the fall and winter. But it's nice to get kind of the first one out of the way and see what went well, what didn't go well, what can we do to, to, to tweak it as we move forward, so. Right. Hey, thank you, Christina. I have asked Amy uh, during our roundtable discussion to give uh, a little quick presentation on that first meeting we had. It'd be uh, kind of a perspective from a meeting participants' view, also. So, uh, and, but the CIC is privileged to have two of us on that committee. Uh, Amy is representing the CIC and I'm representing the TAC, the Transportation Advisory Committee. So we've got two of us there from the CIC, that's good. That's great. Okay, uh, general business. Uh, the uh, code approval has been approved and is in effect. So, all of our hard work from the past and everybody's participation, we were able to successfully get that through approved by the city commission and it's now part of the code or it is the code. And then also we had our bylaws approved. So we've, we've done actually two major, major things I think for the CIC and the very few months here, uh, Mike, my question, Christina, is when can we expect to see those updated information on the, C on the uh, uh, city website, the new code and the bylaws? Sure, we can do two things. It takes a while for the Muni code, which is a third party, to be updated. 
But what I can do is I can get the um, approved wording uh, and a PDF and I can attach it to the CIC website in the interim if that's helpful for everybody. Because okay. it may be two or three months before that gets changed over on the municipal code because we get in a queue. Yeah, that'd be great. I appreciate okay. it. Do that. I can do that. Okay. Anybody else had anything about the code approval and bylaws? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bob. I know that one of those meetings, you had to sit there till almost 1030 before you got to talk and oh, I was tired. I couldn't imagine how just watching it. I can't imagine how tired you were sitting there. Yeah, those uh, chairs keep getting more uncomfortable the older I get. <laughs> and I'll go no further. <laughs> Okay, let's see. I guess we're on to the round table. Uh, Dennis, would you call the people by name for the round table, please? Sure. Um, am I leading off? I, I, I think I'll defer to, uh, <laughs> to my uh, Linda. <laughs> um, so I have nothing to offer. I'm passing. Okay. Bob, um, Bob is next on the list. I, Linda, you want to go? Linda, you want to go uh, ahead? August twelfth, we're going to Kanema. We'll be having a steering committee meeting, and mostly we will be deciding when and where we can have a meeting in September. Um, we've been having meetings in part in the park, Kanema Park, but in September it gets dark and um, possibility of getting wet. So just looking for meeting places. If anyone has any great ideas, love to hear them. Moving down the list, Bob? Well, I'll let Steve Van Haber do the park place part of it, but I, what I've been doing as the CIC chair is asking our people who are giving presentations to keep it, as you probably noticed, 15 to 20 minutes per, per presentation. And um, I'm hoping that that will keep things a little bit under control. If anybody thinks that that is not giving them enough time, I'd appreciate your input. Um, and a future right now, the only one I have actually scheduled is a presentation by the, uh, let's see, it's the, uh, I don't know, the people that run the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center, Clackamas, Her Clackamas Heritage Partners. We've heard a lot from them over the years, but very little is known about them, so I'm going to have them give us a presentation in the future. Anybody has, has any other ideas for presenters? Why pass the information on to me, please. Thank you. Next is Denise. There we go. Um, no, we haven't had much happening. Uh, our next meeting is this Thursday. It's a steering committee meeting. We're meeting on Zoom. And then the following meeting would be September 3rd. And that's it. Steve? So Park Place will be having a uh, steering committee meeting on the 17th, I believe the date is, via Zoom. Um, and the only other thing that I'm aware of happening right now is uh, the uh, New playground structure at Park Place Park is up and they mulched in the bottom and only one thing is we're missing one post so otherwise it looks great. John is next. Um, well we're hoping to meet again someday. Um, our normal schedule meeting is September 22. Way things look, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, not much around the neighborhood. Um, the main roads being put through the Myers Roads looks really great. The park's going really well. 
you know, it's right down the street from us, so we get to see it all the time. Uh, hopefully, some point in time, we're back to school, and we can have meet in public and normal. You know, it'd be really nice if we get to that point in time, because it's pretty frustrating trying to do things online and not face-to-face -face with people and, you know, work with them on ideas. But uh, we're going to try to do the best we can do under the circumstances. Next would be Amy. If, if. So we had a steering committee meeting. Oh, before I do that, I'll give an update on that 2040 project that Christina talked about. She did a good job of, we had over 40 people on a Zoom call. And the first about hour was just blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Basically going over what the project is, um, lots and lots of paperwork kind of outlining what the project was. And then we broke out into groups, which I thought was the best part of the whole meeting. They broke us out into four groups and we talked about what kind of other questions can we ask and how can we word things? How can we reach different people? Um, what's our, what we're thinking? And one of the questions that our group talked about, instead of just asking, what would you like to change? Because sometimes that's hard to come up with an answer. But I thought a great question was, what's missing? So when you're talking about Oregon City, like, what brought you to Oregon City? Why did you come here? What, what do you like about it? And then, what's missing? And I thought that was a great, just a different take on the question. Might be easy for some people to answer. We had a lot of concern about um, meeting, getting the ideas from the elderly, from the youth, the LGBTQ communities, and getting their opinions in a way that would make them feel heard. We talked a lot about how the same um, Demographics tend to answer the surveys and might reach out. So how can we reach out? So if you have any ideas, if you'd like to, um, I'd be glad to come help you host a meeting or um, I'm trying to figure out how to gather a group at a park or, you know, the best ways to, to do that. But that was, I think was the best part of the meeting. We have a lot of people that are really excited. And so I really hope that this project gets to take off and that we really get to get the input that they say that they want. Um, it was really hard that first hour listening. Um, at first it felt like they'd already planned the way it was going to go. So it'll be really interesting. Um, I don't know how you felt about that, Bob, but there was a little skepticism in our group of is the community really going to be able to lead this or are they just going to take our answers and put them in a big spreadsheet somewhere, you know? So that was, that was my take on the meeting. Um, but it was really great. I was, I was excited that there were so many people and from different walks of life there. It was, that was just really neat, really neat. As far as Gaffney Lane, um, we had a steering committee meeting in a backyard in July. It was so much fun to actually socially distance, see each other in person, not just on Zoom. We've had a lot of land use Zoom meetings, but that was really fun. We are looking for a new location for our Gaffney Lane meetings. In the past, we've met at the um, Retirement Center and looking to the future, that's probably not a good place to hold meetings if we can't even get back to holding meetings. So we're kind of looking for a new place. We talked about Moala Avenue. If any of you have driven that between Beaver Creek and 213, you know, it's all torn up and starting in on that project. So avoid it if you can. We talked about, we had put together a proposal for a grant for utility wraps on the electrical boxes and some of the other boxes along this new Malala strip. But we decided we canceled our application and we'll put it again next year. We didn't feel that the project will be far enough along that we could spend the money in this year, calendar year for, well, it's a, I think it's July to June or, so we'll put it back next year, which then brought us to the question, last year that community enhancement grant was awarded to the city, the public works, to put a cross street banner of, um, in our neighborhood. 
our neighborhoods had strongly objected to that banner and we felt very betrayed that Public Works would go behind our back and put in for a grant application. They were looking for an extension because like us, they couldn't spend the money. Theirs was in 2019 that was awarded. So the money was supposed to be sent, spent by July of 2020. Well, the road hasn't even been started. So they asked for an extension until July of 2021. Our neighborhood put in a request to deny and it was over, I don't know, because that meeting isn't public, I couldn't see it or watch it, but they went ahead and um, gave them the extension. So our neighborhood is pretty disheartened by that. It feels like we have a public department that's going against a neighborhood and that was that was really to us hurtful. So that was came up at our location, our talk about. The other thing I'm concerned about is land use notices. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've had two land use notices come from the South End neighborhood. And both of those I caught when I received a notice had not come to the CIC. And then we, I received a notice in the mail and an email for Gaffney Lane. And it was for someone who has come well over, a, actually in two years ago, and they just now submitted their application. And if you remember, the code was changed and they're supposed to come to the neighborhoods within a year of submitting their application. And when I brought that up to the planning department, they said, oops, we just missed it. We'll try to catch it next time. So I'm a little disheartened by this. I just received um, another land use then I had to ask Christina because it's hard to tell when it's a type two, whether or not it needs a neighborhood. So I'm, I'm wondering if there's something that can be helpful on the application that we get when we receive the notice if a neighborhood's required, because when I go to the code, it's, it lists what's required for a neighborhood, but it, it's sometimes the land use comes through and you can't tell what it fits. So I'm just wondering if there's a, a way, because I feel like I'm having to, every single one I get, go through and I have to read the whole list of objectives to see if they've met with a neighborhood and where. So Our, we're a little concerned about that in Gaffney Lane, but. I mean, I know it's crazy times, but that seems like an easy thing that should be caught if they've met with a neighborhood or not. So those are our concerns and what's happening in Gaffney Lane. And last is Carla. Hi, um, I'm Carla. Um, anyways, we had our first meeting in a while on j an app called Jiu-Jitsu, which is kind of similar to Zoom. It has like these rooms that you can label as your own room. So there's less interference. So you can actually call room something and invite people to that meeting. It's more private and secure. Um, I've been told I'm still experimenting with it. Um, and we had a pretty decent turnout. We had like, I think if I recall at least over 20 people that showed up virtually. So, and we had discussed, um, you know, Basically, I'm trying to recall what we were talking about. We got into um, what we kind of wanted to plan forward for our meetings. Uh, the beauty of our site hills, and they actually are our parks. You know, we usually meet, meet at St. John the Apostle, but actually at Mountain View Cemetery, there is the Parents of Murdered Children site. That's like the big circle where we can actually sit far apart. Um, so it's something of a possibility. Um, we t discussed, you know, kind of what the future holds because um, Waterboard Park has been designated as a park basically. And so we were talking about how that affects our neighborhood slightly and what, you know, possibly in the future about, you know, the low, the, upper yard of the waterboard park what the you know what's being suggested that's going to happen we, had, we don't have any idea yet but um and then we discussed um i some people attended that were presenting i guess about the recall petition and that was about it um and uh i'm trying to think here what else um i just heard recently what it's similar to amy a, a concern um i just saw the city commission agenda 
And I guess there are going to be showers um, designated in Barclay Hills at Milner Vet um, to bathe, you know, people in need that need showers, which I think is a great, you know, hygiene effort. And I, I realize, you know, meetings haven't been happening. Um, so it's hard to notify people. Sometimes these things need to happen sooner than because obviously a lot of people are in need. Um, but it sounds like it's been an effort plan for some time and our neighborhood was never notified. So I think I'm planning on seeing the city commission meeting on Wednesday and then possibly, sorry, one second here. Libby, can you be quiet for one second, please, honey? Um, and I'm planning on attending that meeting to figure out um, where that's going to go or what that looks like. If they are planning just every Sunday in our neighborhood, if it's one time or many times, or if this is going to happen throughout the city. So I'm going to seek information on that this Wednesday. But like Amy had said, you know, we weren't notified at all. And it sounds like it's been uh, planned for some time. So I'm kind of concerned about that. So just that we're notified and informed. And that's it for me. Okay, that's it? Yep. Okay, is Commissioner Lyle Smith in attendance? Yes. Uh, How about uh, City Manager Tony Conkle? <laughs> Did you hear me? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Um, sorry, you were quick on the trigger. I'm uh, sorry. I, I keep forgetting that there's a a little bit of a delay between questions and responses during these meetings. So <laughs> I apologize for that. You got you got to find the unmute button, right? Um, so I don't really have too much tonight. Um, I wanted to uh, reiterate the request for the community conversation kits um, on getting input from our neighbors. You know, I think all local governments are challenged with um, getting input from their community. And so as much as the neighborhoods can help to try to get input from our uh, neighborhoods and from folks in our neighborhoods, that would be wonderful. Um, and if, you're, if you need some support from the city on that, um, then I would definitely reach out to Pete Walter, who's, who's um, uh, the planner in, in leading this effort. Um, I, th I think the city can help help you if you really need it because it having a conversation as you can tell just trying to run this meeting vir via a virtual meeting can be challenging I mean you could do like what Amy suggested for Gaffney Lane where they met in someone's backyard and you had an open conversation that way I think that would be a good option too because these virtual meetings can be difficult when you're trying to have an open discussion but um, I, I would encourage you to try to use your network to try to get some input as much as possible. Um, we do have some staffing changes uh, that Tony might was was going to mention, but um, we have a new Parks and Recreation Director. His name is Kendall Reed. Um, he started last week, uh, so we're really excited to have him on as the permanent, uh, the new permanent uh, Parks and Rec Director. We had an interim person, Mr. Don Robertson, or Roberts, Robertson, Roberts, anyway. Um, <laughs> And uh, he's just done a stellar job of filling in um, after um, Phil Lewis's departure. Uh, he picked up some, some major projects for the Parks and Recs Department and really picked them up and moved them forward. And uh, we really appreciate um, his uh, helping out the city for that. And so we're excited to have Kendall Reed and I'm sure um, maybe he can make us an introduction uh, to the CIC before too long. That may be something, uh, Bob, if you want to put on your agenda, um, maybe to welcome him to the city um, and, um, and you know, maybe give some feedback on parks and recreation and, and things that, that you're interested in. He's a fresh, a fresh set, set of eyes that are, that are coming to us. Um, and then at the same time, uh, we are losing uh, Wyatt Parno. He is our finance director. Wyatt Parno is um, um, a really uh, phenomenal uh, director and manager that we've had in the city. Um, he is actually going to the South Fork Water uh, District, so not too far away. We still have a relationship with South Fork Water. 
so we will continue to work with him, but um, we will start recruitment for his replacement ASAP. His last date with us is October 1st, and we will definitely be sad to see him leave us. Um, so um, with that, that's all I have, and, and maybe Tony can um, address some of the questions or things that came up in the round table. Uh, but I'll turn it over to him. Sure, thanks, Commissioner Lyle Smith. So just a couple of things, yep. Uh, Kendall Reed started last Tuesday as our Parks and Rec Director, so he's getting his feet under him, getting familiar with the projects and staffing. Um, and Don Robertson is uh, staying on to just help <clears throat> with that transition for a little bit um, until Kendall kind of gets the download on everything that's happening in that department. Uh, hopefully folks have had a chance to go by the new police and court facility. Uh, that's scheduled to be completed in early September. Um, as you go by, you'll see the um, in the plaza is going to be a, we reclaimed the original window uh, that was in the front of the school that will be part of a uh, monument on the plaza. So the old brick from the building have been uh, put up and they'll be moving that window as well as the plaque um, uh, for Robert Libke uh, onto that site pretty soon. So coming along pretty quick, we anticipate, like I said, we'll probably start to move into the building in early September with a uh, ribbon cutting uh, later later in uh, late September, early October, uh, by the time we're able to get everything into there. Um, so we've worked with uh, Clackamas County Emergency Services on locating shower facilities throughout the community for the last several months since COVID started. Uh, the first request was for Father's Heart. Uh, because of COVID, there was their offering, they've historically always offered showers uh, they've drastically reduced the numbers of showers that they can provide uh, at that facility. Uh, so the original one was to put a shower facility on Father's Heart. Um, they were able to open that facility, uh, which reduced the need for the shower there. Uh, the commission did approve a shower facility, a mobile shower unit at the Abernethy, the the, the old blue buildings on Abernethy, that are the Clackamas County uh, buildings. Uh, that was for one to two days a week, depending on demand. After the first two weeks, there was very limited demand. Uh, so an organization called, uh, I believe it was Heart One, Love One, uh, reached out um, in working with uh, Mr. Milner at the Milner Veterinary Clinic. And uh, through Clackamas County Emergency Services, we received a request uh, about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, to place a, um, uh, to be able to bring a shower facility, a shower trailer onto the site one day a week, Sunday evenings. Um, and so that'll be in front of the commission to consider it. It has not been in the works for a long time. Uh, this was a request brought to us uh, through Love One, I believe, as well as Clackamas County Emergency Services to pr try to provide some showering hygiene facilities um, in, a, in a location that would be a little bit more hopefully conducive for homeless uh, citizens in our community to get to those resources um, moving forward. So that'll be in front of the commission on Wednesday uh, for their consideration. Um, yep, Denise, I think I see your hand waving. I'd be Love Inc. I think it's Love, so yeah, I don't have the staff report in front of me. I can't remember if it was Love Inc. or Love One, something like okay. that. Yeah. Um, I think it's Love One. Um, Love Inc. is a separate entity. Yeah, I think it's Love One. I hadn't read, yeah. Um, but they would be, they have their volunteer organization and they would be supplemented by uh, Clackamas County Emergency Services, so uh, providing shower facilities, laundry facilities, so essentially you'd have the ability to drop off dirty clothes, pick up clean clothes uh, at that facility um, uh, while they're there. Uh, off the top of my head, I could pull up the staff report, but I think it was for about four hours uh, on a Sunday evening um, um, until we get through at least the summer, if not until the emergency um, 
dissipates uh, and additional hygiene showering facilities are able to open up as they traditionally had pre-COVID. Um, but once again, we'll see, this would be, you know, there was very limited demand down at Evernethy Center or down at, um, on Evernethy Road at the uh, transportation center there for Clackamas, uh, Clackamas County. Um, you know, I think the, you know, understand the concerns from Amy related to the cross street banner. That was also something that we've heard from the community at Desire 4. Uh, we used to have more banner locations throughout the city, cross street banner locations. Um, as part of the Malala project was, uh, was looking at providing because of the, you know, a, a cross street banner location that the city would be able to own and, and, and manage rather than relying on Portland General Electric uh, for those facilities. Um, when we did the sign code that also limited some of those banner advertising opportunities. I know one of the biggest advocates for cross street banners uh, was the, uh, uh, the market, the farmer's market requesting additional opportunities to advertise um, their uh, th when they were having their, um, their market going on. Um, so that was brought before the uh, enhancement committee as an extension request, which my understanding is, is that they did did approve. Tony, uh, can, I just, can I just say real quick, uh, I watched the city commission meeting where we were talking, you were talking about the farmer's market asked for a special banner over at their site. And it came up multiple times how banners are not allowed in the city unless it's a city banner. And I, I just had a really hard time with the city saying, well, we can't have a banner except for a weekend. You know, you can't have a banner, but we can. And if well, I mean, I don't think it's an all or nothing proposition. I think that when we did the sign code, one of the biggest complaints that we received were banners on private property being ex put up all over the place. Oh, I agree. I was on that committee. <laughs> right. And so then there was a pushback of, you know, could you do it tastefully like we have on Main Street? You know, we have the, the banners on, on the street lights there. So is there an appropriate way? I don't think it's, it's, it's an all or nothing. Um, so I think that was the balancing that was trying to go on there was, you know, how do we, how do we inform about community events um, while trying to rein in, you know, wavy things and banners and, and signs everywhere. So that, that was, that was where we ended up. Right. I get that. Um, it's just the location that is, was picked is right in our neighborhood, right at the, right kind of by the, um, what is that shopping center called? That's just a zoo. That, um, oh, right off of 213 there? Yeah. OC it point. It's a terrible, in my, in our neighborhood's opinion, it was a dangerous place to put a banner because you've got crosswalks and you've got cars coming in and out of, especially now that Lazy Creek's going to go through. So you've got cars coming off the, off of the 213 bypass coming on to Malala. You've got cars coming out of Lazy Creek. You've got cars coming in and out of OC point and to have a banner right there we felt was so dangerous and we were just really disheartened that we were it wasn't even brought up it went they went it wasn't even acknowledged that hey we hear what you're saying but this is where it's, we'd you know we'd like to have it they completely didn't ignore any of our comments and they went and asked for a grant without even telling us and when we asked when we were going we asked the over and over at those open houses for the Malala project, we said, where, you know, who, how is this coming about? And it's really disheartening when the managers and the project managers of those departments say, oh, well, you know, people wanted them. And then to come to find out that they were the ones that wanted it and they were the ones that asked for the grant. So it just, I just needed to make sure that you hear again that our neighborhood was, very concerned about this for safety reasons and we asked over and over and have been it just felt like again behind the back so that's where I was coming from Tony okay thank you um, so with that I don't have any other updates unless somebody has questions for us for me okay I guess that's it then um, does anybody else have anything they'd like to interject before the end of the meeting? 
Yes, I wanted to ask one other question for Tony. Yes. This is Carla. Hey, I wanted to know is if these showers that are going to be at Milner, if they're going to be kind of cycled through the city, not only just in Barclay Hills, because when I see on next door, there's, you know, a homeless crisis, not just in Barclay Hills, not just in McLaughlin, but pretty much everywhere. And is, is Milner going to be the only location as other neighborhoods going to have to, you know, off, you know, that it'll be placed in other neighborhoods? And if so, would neighborhoods get notification ahead of time if possible? So right now, the proposed, so the, there's the one, there's the shower facilities that exist at Father's Heart. Right. And then this is the, the location that, you know, they were able to find a property owner willing to uh, volunteer their property. Uh, so, so right now this is um, volunteer organization driven. Okay. Uh, so, so they've brought this to us. I think it was more of a um, opportunity of, of someone willing rather than necessarily a specific location. Okay. Um, so if there are other locations throughout the city, you know, I think where we deal with it mainly is obviously uh, Newell Creek Canyon, you know, up around, up around Safeway, um, and then down along 99E, uh, which is why we were trying to locate one down by Ebernethy, uh, trying to, you know, trying to target that population that tends to be, you know, along the river, Clackamas Park, um, along the railroad tracks there down by the um, uh, water environmental services facility. Um, is there technically co cooperation with Metro? Because Metro technically is supposedly working with the lower part of Barclay Hills Drive to keep the Newell Creek Canyon clear just because for the homeowners down there and for the, re you know, just for the canyon itself, if they look at renovating that to restore it as a natural park, um, technically long term, the longer, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm, obviously there's a lot of needs right now and there's humanity to consider and kindness. It's just the canyon isn't necessarily the safest spot for the, you know, the homeless population or the neighborhood. So long term is the city cooper cooperating with Metro to try to kind of clear out the canyon because it's the canyon is now kind of has a lot of homeless and Metro doesn't want that. Um, yes, we continually cooperate with Metro and trying to address the homeless issues down in the canyon. Um, I know they did a sweep. I think it was the end of last summer through there. Um, you know, once, you know, it, look, we work with them. We've sent our homeless officer, liaison officer down in there. Uh, we'll send up cleaning, clean up clues down into there. Uh, we do have a jurisdictional issue in that most of that property is actually outside the city limits. Uh, it's okay. in Clackamas County and it's owned by Metro, but there is coordination going on to try to reduce the number of homeless individuals. Uh, there was a pretty significant camp taken out of there. I can't remember if it was earlier this summer or late last fall uh, that addressed some of the, the homeless transit issues that we see down in that canyon. Uh, mm -hmm. but but it continues to be, you know, to be an issue that we see. And then with the COVID breaking out, you know, the governor's order is that we do not displace homeless camps at this time to try to reduce the spread between the homeless population. Okay. Uh, so really it's been trying to manage through contacts and then trying to get, a, you know, clean clothes, hygiene opportunities, um, you know, until we can kind of get through this a little bit more into I don't know, whatever the new normal looks like moving forward. It's just as a chair of the neighborhood, the concern for the neighbors down at um, Bar Lower Barclay Hills is their un intentions there is to try, to, their intentions is that Metro has worked with them to try, they have to call Metro every time they see something down there. And then my concern too is the neighbors near Milner have no idea. I just talked to, um, the cemetery there so they're aware when I you know read the agenda of what's going on uh, but it'd be nice you know I mean I realize this is like a big issue right now that we just need to try to help people and get people clean sometimes things happen to where you know 
just needs to happen and we don't really have time and we're not really having meetings but we're starting to but it'd be nice if I could reach out to try to reach out to those neighbors and I will attempt to um but it I just you know in the future I realize you've have we've only had a couple weeks but it'd be really nice to try to let my neighbors know if I can so yep understood okay thank you know you. I think I think one thing we did on the Abernethy one and the commission may consider this again as a check-in you know, so let's let let's let it happen for two, three, four times, and then we check in to see how it's being managed, what kind of issues we're seeing. Because, you know, I think the commission does realize, you know, some of these are going pretty quick under emergency ordinances or emergency decisions, declarations to try to get them in to address an existing condition. Um, and so, yeah, if there are negative impacts that you know, whether it's the nonprofit organization or emergency services aren't aren't meeting as what was anticipated then maybe we can either correct that or you know to address that so i don't i don't think it's if it's in that's the end i think it's let's you know let's get it in you know if there are significant impacts let us know and then we can address those moving forward with you know certain things that have happened with nonprofits that i've seen in my neighborhood that you know once things get established you don't necessarily you know, it's kind of like it happens, it's approved, you know, obviously Milner owns his property. So it's like, in, if we do have a say, we only go so far with, you know, what we can do at that point. So I will yeah, I um, think, definitely I think, put it on I, the I think, card. Yeah, I think this is a little different. I mean, we're enacting this under the emergency ordinance, the emergency declaration that we put in place to address COVID. I mean, this is okay. specifically to address the COVID response. This is different than a, you know, okay. a living facility. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's what you're referring to there. And so, you know, yeah. I think this is under very, very different rules. And in the staff report, it specifically says, you know, this is not intended as a permanent long-term um, location for this service. And I don't think anybody intends that to be either. They'd rather be in buildings with actual shower stalls and, and whatnot available to them. Okay, I will probably attend the city commission meeting and then I, you know, long when it's addressed or the work session, I'll look at the agenda and then also um, I'll put on the postcard at our next meeting to try to inform the neighbors. So, and so we can have a discussion on it. So thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Does anybody else have anything? Okay, there will be no meeting in September since, since uh, Labor Day. So hopefully we'll see everybody in October and this meeting is adjourned. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tony. Great job. Christina. Bob. Thank you. Bye, everybody.